I think it's about time I let you guys know the club that I root for in the Premier League. I cheer for a lot of clubs, underdogs mostly, but the club I cheer for over all others is Liverpool. Since about 2011, I fixated on Liverpool because of a new arrival, Luis Suarez. I was young at the time and just followed players mostly, but it was time to settle down. I was in awe of Suarez's ability on the pitch, so I gravitated toward the Reds. My grandfather is also a Liverpool fan, and it allows me to spend some extra time watching games with him. Liverpool holds a special place in my heart. Over the past 15 years of following them, despite not always winning, there have been moments that I'll cherish forever. One of the greatest highlights was when Divock Origi scored that quick corner, completing a miraculous comeback from 3-0 down on aggregate that allowed us to take on Tottenham in the final and clinch the Champions League. Another unforgettable memory is the personal success story of Luis Suarez, who scored an astonishing 31 goals in just 33 matches during the 2014 season. But amidst these remarkable moments, some of my fondest memories were this year, shared with my grandfather, watching the games together and experiencing the highs and lows of this season. One of the most positive aspects about football is the camaraderie and connection you get through playing and being a fan. So I am thankful for that. For Liverpool, in the end, there was a lot of hope around the Reds to win another title, just before the man who brought so much success to the club in recent years leaves. The collapse this year has been a tough pill to swallow. In this video, I'll be going through what's gone on this past season at Liverpool, as well as taking a look at their recent implosion. If you guys don't want to have your season snatched away from you in the last couple of weeks, you should probably join the 210 big bucks and sub to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So, to start this out, I want to talk about how the season seemed to go as a whole before I dive deeper into what seems to be the problem on the pitch. The 23-24 campaign for Liverpool proved to be a turbulent journey, marked by shifts from carefree enjoyment to intense pressure. Jurgen Klopp's leadership guided the team through what was expected to be a transitional period, but it evolved into a tumultuous ride filled with twists and turns. At the outset, a sense of relief permeated through the club as the weight of expectations was small. As fans, we all wanted the club to succeed, but it was pretty clear this season seemed to be a bit of a rebuild at the start. Coming off a lackluster season, Liverpool saw the departure of key players, including some notable stars like Roberto Firmino. The focus shifted from immediate glory to gradual progress, with the goal of laying a solid foundation for the future. Early signs of promise emerged, such as an impressive debut of the Hungarian Dominic Sabozlai and the resurgence of Luis Diaz. However, the squad also displayed evident weaknesses. Despite this, Victories like a hard-fought win down a man at Newcastle injected momentum and optimism into the team. The youthful energy and resilience of the squad were palpable, with emerging talents like Darwin Nunez and Gerald Kwanzaa rising to the occasion. Even established players like Trent Alexander-Arnold found themselves contributing in unconventional ways, reflecting the team's newfound sense of freedom and enjoyment on the pitch. Most of us were enjoying the ride, having no expectations of a title push early on in the season. Yet, as the season unfolded, a shift occurred. Klopp's announcement of his impending departure added urgency and pressure to the team's objectives. Suddenly, what was once perceived as a long-term project became a race against time to achieve success before Klopp's departure. The team initially responded well delivering impressive performances and securing crucial victories. However, as pressure mounted, cracks began to appear. Narrow wins and tense moments underscored the team's fragility under heightened expectations. Crucially, the joy and freedom that characterized the early part of the season gave way to anxiety and doubt. Defensive lapses, missed opportunities, and a lack of confidence plagued the team leading to a significant decline in performance. 
I want to take a dive into these problems and whether they will be fixed going forward. At some point this season, Darwin Nunez looked unstoppable. He was converting difficult chances in all different types of ways. He also seemed to be an excellent passer in certain situations around the goal, but he had a clear issue that made itself evident towards the end of the season. Darwin pretty consistently made the wrong decision with the ball when looking to convert easy chances. Darwin's play during the Everton match this past week highlights this. Darwin had basically a one-on-one -on -one with Pickford, and instead of going across the keeper and using finesse to guide the ball into the bottom left corner, he bottled it and drove with power right at the keeper. The numbers reflect this example as Darwin has 15 expected goals, but has only scored 11. He has not been able to convert the easiest chances this year, and that has been a big hindrance to the club's success. I use Darwin as an example to start, but this encompasses all of Liverpool's forwards. There are just three players on the team who have outperformed their expected goals number, and that is Alexis McAllister, Andy Robinson, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. It's only by one goal. Two defenders and one midfielder are outperforming their XG. That is not the recipe for success. All of our attacking players are missing easy chances with high XG. Salah has 19 expected goals, but has only scored 17. Diaz has 11 expected goals, but only has 8. The forwards in this system are leaving tons of goals on the pitch, and the numbers back that up. Just with the naked eye, it's so easy to see. Liverpool dominate clubs with relentless pressure and average over 20 shots per game, yet don't convert nearly enough of them. Liverpool's actual goals to expected goals is minus six. Maybe it is just unlucky, but the problem of finishing has been as clear as day, even without the statistics. The two teams who are going to go on and win the league have five players each who outperform their expected goal metrics. Arsenal and City have players who convert the easy and the hard chances consistently. Defensively, the issue also seems pretty clear. There is very little accountability on this squad. The wide open header or free runner always seems to be, quote, someone else's man. There is a lack of clear positioning and communication on set pieces. Whether it's the leadership that's missing or just incompetence, I'm not sure. Examples I can use are Allison and Van Dyke's miscue against Arsenal, allowing them to take the lead, Jarrell Kwanzaa's bad pass and Kelleher out of position, allowing for Fernandez's goal from half field in Old Trafford. These mistakes need to be cleaned up if a team wants to compete for a title. There have been so many positives this season that get overshadowed by this collapse. Alexis McAllister has become a dominant central midfielder on both sides of the ball. For all his faults, Darwin Nunez is an incredible passer near the goal, and Connor Bradley looks to be growing into an incredible right back. There are many more positives, but for me at least, Klopp's departure and Liverpool sitting atop the table for a substantial amount of time made me think we are in win now mode. I think a lot of fans and some of the players felt that way as well. This in turn dialed up the expectations and pressure. This season was a success in a lot of ways, but mental mistakes and poor play overshadowed that at this moment. Ultimately, Liverpool's season has collapsed into disappointment. With Klopp's farewell marred by the team's failure to meet all of these lofty expectations. In hindsight, it's evident that the season became too serious too quickly. What was meant to be a period of transition and growth turned into a high stakes battle for immediate success. I think that is the biggest thing. Yes, I am upset about the end to this season, but I think for me, I'm just gonna have to look at the positive aspects of the season and what we can look forward to in the future. Klopp truly did set Liverpool up for success going forward. And a third place finish after a dismal last year and a mini rebuild is pretty remarkable. I said it in my previous video on Liverpool, the club is set up for success going into the future.